In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Google Forms survey. Now, you don't have to make an online survey. You can make a paper survey if you want. Um, you also don't have to use Google Forms for this class, but I think this is the best option for you. Unless you want to pay for SurveyMonkey for a, a month. Um, the free version of SurveyMonkey only let you look at the data doesn't allow you to download an Excel file so you will still have to type up your answers now if you only have 10 answers 10 people then that won't be so much of a problem but if you have a lot of people that would be very annoying to do but you could pay for it survey monkey is a little nicer uh, you could also try to use Qualtrics or uh, Microsoft Forms but I'm going to show you how to do Google Forms. So I just Googled Google Forms and then I'm going to go down, skip this ad, and go here and go to Google Forms and you can start a blank one. Now I'm logged into my Gmail account or Google account. So you do have to make one to make a survey, but if you don't have one, you can. Just make one and then delete it after this class is over if you want, if you don't want to keep it, but it's free. So then just push blank, and here you go. You can put your um, title here and the description here, and this is where the questions will go. I already started one um, over here. So let me go up a little bit. I put a title and I put a little description. You might want to say this is an anonymous survey, meaning that you won't know what um, responses go with who. It's especially important when something is kind of a little sensitive and you want people to be honest. So if it's anonymous, people are more likely to be honest. Okay, to add a question, you just press this add button here. Um, and then you can go here and pick what kind of question that you want from these right here. And if you want to delete it, you just push this trash can. So here I have um, a categorical variable. So if it's a categorical variable, you want to choose the multiple choice. And I typed in male, female, prefer not to say. Um, you can also add an other option. So I recommend using this, just typing other in. If you use this other, then what happens is the person will be able to type in another option. And that might make your analysis later a little bit more complicated for you because if you have a lot of different uh, responses here then when you make like a bar chart or a pie graph you're gonna have a lot of people that have categories that they uh, put and it'll be hard to make your pie chart because you have too many categories and it just looks messy so I would recommend just writing it out like other if you want to do this then you might have to um, fix your data a little bit later on so it's up to you if you want to um, get more information, but it might make more work for you later. You can do that uh, where it has add other this part. But if you just want to keep things simple, I would just type out the word other. Here's another categorical variable I did. Um, again, I typed other instead of doing this. Um, you probably want to have more options here if you do college major, but just for simplicity, I just did psychology and math. Now I'm going on to the scale variables. So for the scale variables, the important thing is that you want to be able to have numeric numbers in your Excel sheet that Google Forms is going to make for you. So you want it to be numbers like this one two three four five to ten this kind of question if you're doing a Likert type scale and it's just one by itself then I would pick a linear scale and then you can say one to ten or one to five or whatever and then put the endpoints on there 
Mine was not at all and a lot. Now, if you have a question that you don't know exactly what numbers they're going to put, or there can be a lot of different numbers they could put, like um, the num how old they are, or their income, or something like that, and you can't do something like this, you can't um, put it on, the, you can't put 1 through 10, you can't put every single option of age there is then you're going to have to have them type in a number so that would be a short answer and if you can see let's see oops so i also put this note to please put in a numeric number instead of words because if they put in words then you're going to have to fix it later the numerics make it a lot easier so for a scale variable a scale variable means that you can average out the answers, right? You can average out numbers 1 through 10. You can average out the number of classes they're taking. You can average that out. For categorical variables, you can't take averages. You can't average out someone's gender or college major. That doesn't make any sense, right? Now, here's another example of a kind of categorical variable. Now, age, if you put it in categories, then it's a categorical variable. If you um, put it in years or like have them type it in, then this is a scale variable because it's going to be in numbers. So hopefully that makes a little sense. Even the same kind of concept that you're measuring, such as age, can be either a scale variable or a categorical variable depending on how you measure it. So in this case, it is a scale variable because the answer is in numbers and you can take the average of those numbers. Here, the answers are kind of still in numbers, but it's really harder to take the average, right? What are you, what are you gonna put to take the average? I mean, you can put the middle number, but it's still kind of really not the average, right? You could say, okay, the middle of 31 to 40 is about 35. So for that category, you say it could make it 35 but you're still really not getting the average if you do that so if you have age like this then it's a categorical variable and then if you have them type in the number like this one up here this is a scale variable so scale var variables aren't only the ones like this it's also if you have numbers anything to do with numbers that aren't just random numbers so if I gave um, numbers for male and female, I said male was one and female was two, that you could take the average of, but the numbers don't make any sense, right? I could have done it the other way. I could have had one female and two male. The numbers in that case would be arbitrary. So even though you do have numbers, it's still a categorical variable. All right. Then the last kind that you can kind of do is if you kind of have a lot of statements or questions for the same concept and you want to put it all together, you can do the grid, multiple choice grid. And you put all your uh, statements here and then your answers or responses here. I chose just put them in numbers because that will make it easier when you're trying to take the average. If you say like one, uh, if you put strongly disagree here, because that's what it really means up here, if you put strongly disagree here, then it's going to be a little harder later on to um, take the average. You're going to have to manipulate your data a little bit. So the easier way is to do one through five here or whatever numbers you have. And then you have your statements here. Now, these questions or statements are all about the same kind of concept. So let me go see if I can go out of it a little bit. There you go. So you can see it. So it says, on a scale from one, strongly disagree to five, strongly agree. How much do you disagree or agree to the following statements? This scale is a Likert type scale, and the numbers are given to the category. So 
technically it's kind of an ordinal variable, which you might not know what that is yet. And it's not really a true scale variable, but psychologists usually treat these Likert type scales as a scale variable so we can take the average of them and do more statistics on them than we could if we just kept it as a categorical variable. Now to treat it as a scale variable we have to assume that the difference between 1 and 2 and 2 and 3, 3 and 4 and 4 and 5, those differences between the numbers are the same. So the amount of agreement from going from 1 to 2 is the same amount of agreement from going to 2 to 3 or from 3 to 4 or from 4 to 5. This might not make very much sense right now, but hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense if you read more in uh, the Phase 2 chapter or handout. Um, but just know that a scale variable can either be a Likert type scale like this or one of those where you type in the number like this or like this or you know if it's like this from 1 to 10 that's kind of like a Likert type scale so that's also a scale okay the categories are these where we have words and categories okay so hopefully that's not too confusing also when we have multiple statements like this or questions, we usually take the average of them if they're about the same concept. Okay, so I enjoy learning new things. I'm very interested. All these things, things are about student engagement. How engaged are you in class? Now, if I had another statement about um, how often do you go to class, that's kind of related to engagement, but it could be due to other things like they just don't have the time to go to class or they got sick or something like that. So maybe that question wouldn't be with these questions. So you just want to make sure if you average out the responses, then it's all the same concept. So if I asked... Um, Do let me think. Oh no, something about school. Like, do you like the cafeteria? That's about school, so it's kind of related, but it's not about engagement. So you wouldn't average that item about the cafeteria with these questions that we have here. Another thing is that you have sometimes you have what are called reverse coded items. And I added one item here that really wasn't on the original scale. This one, I hate going to class. This is what we'd call an, an reverse coded item because it's worded in the opposite direction of the other um, statements. So these statements are very positive. And if people put fives for these items, that would mean they're really highly engaged in college. But if you put a 5 for this one, I hate going to class, that would mean they're very disengaged. So what you need to do is to reverse code it. So if someone put all 5s for these four items, then they're probably likely going to put a 1 for this item. So this is called a reverse code item. But if you average out them, average them out, then this item is going to make their score actually look lower than a 5 when they're really highly engaged and their average should be at five. So what you're going to do later on is for any reverse coded items, you want to make the number switch. So right now you keep it like it is for your survey, but before you take the average or do any statistics on it in your Excel sheet, you will make this, for this reverse coded item, you would make this category actually a 5, this a 4, this a 3, which is already 3, a 2, and a 1. And an easy way to do that is to take the number of response options, which in this case is 5, add 1, which is 6, and then div subtract the original number. So in this case, we have 5 
response options, we add one, that's six, and then for the reverse coded item, say they said one, we do six minus one, that would equal five, and then they would have the correct um, uh, average here. Say they had a two, if you did six minus two, that'd be four, six minus three is three, six minus four is two, and six minus five is one. So everything gets reverse coded, and that's an easy way to do it in Excel. But I will show you how to do that in another video. Just make sure that you kind of look at your items and know that, well, some of them might be reverse coded. Okay, so after you do that, you make your um, survey. Then you can preview it here. Look at it. Um, you can also take your survey and this and then you can um, see what your responses are. Um, once you like your survey, you can percent and you can um, send them to certain emails if you want or if you just want to get the link, you can just copy your link and then you can um, put it on your social media accounts if you want or whatever site you think you want to collect the data from you can put it on the discussion board if you want and there you go that's how you um, make your survey and send it out